2.30, October 3rd, 1996, and time for the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Commission, Television Commission <coughs> meeting to come to order. First, I'll read the, the uh, speaker statement. This meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Co Television Commission is being videotaped in its entirety and it will be cable cast without interruption on my Metro Cable 14, the government affairs channel on the Sacramento Cable System. Today's meeting is being cable cast live and will be repeated Sunday, October 5th at noon. A VHS copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address the commission should fill out a speaker identification form located on the back table and give it to the secretary. Please speak into the microphone when addressing the commission. State your name for the record. Thank you. Item one, grantees report. Mr. Chairman, members, this is an opportunity for your community programming grantees to update you on the status of their activities. Uh, I have a written report from Access. If they have any speakers, the form should be with the clerk. Mike, you got a right. Oh. You have your name on it. You'd like to no speaker sheet. Turn your name around, sir. So um, Chairman, could we take roll first? I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Call the roll, you. please. <laughs> um, that's, that's all right. We had a technical problem, too, so I wanted to make sure. It um, Cox? Present. Colin? Natoli? Dickinson? Here. Yee? Here. Waters? Yes. Pinnell? Here. Pratt? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. And we do have a speaker sheet on Cooper. Mr. Cooper? Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Ron Cooper with uh, Access Sacramento. And uh, I think you should have one of the little manila packets up there. Mm -hmm. I uh, appreciate this opportunity. It's been a long time since we've had an opportunity to update you, so I tried to put some of it down in writing for you so that uh, you could uh, take it with you, peruse it, you know, put you to sleep this night and so forth. Uh, but there's a lot of exciting things that have happened. I just want to go through those very briefly. In a summary of recent activities, June through September, our board has welcomed two new members to the board as a result of our election process. Uh, Dr. Marilee Lewis, president of Cosumnes River College, and Dr. Al Brown, uh, criminal justice professor from Sac State, uh, join our board. Uh, the executive committee remains the same with one addition, and that is newly elected chief financial officer Javier Placencia. Uh, we awarded, uh, as has been our um, uh, track record for, say, I believe it's eight years in a row now, the Wong scholarships. Uh, five $200 scholarships were awarded to deserving uh, students studying communications at Cassandra Server College. We also are very pleased to announce that uh, memos of understanding have now been finalized with the Sacramento County Office of Education the Regional Occupations Program and TV and Radio Broadcasting. ROP is now in our studios, in our production facilities, Monday through Friday from 8 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon, training folks on much better equipment than they could have done on their own, uh, and in return working with our community producers, doing station IDs and promos and actual programs. So it's a wonderful marriage of facilities and training opportunities. And as part of our pledge to you, when we received the <laughs> increase over the last two years, also served then in terms of finalizing a three-year agreement with SCOE for the use of the facility and a matching grant of $40,000 to add to our equipment. And in turn, uh, we've been able to then match that with the money that you uh, uh, shared with us. Uh, so we've seen a major upgrade in facilities at the Coloma Center, not just for ROP, but for all the community producers that come there. Uh, at this month's Los Rios Community College District meeting, our understanding is that the MOU with the district and with Cosumnes River College will be approved. Everything looks fine there. This is exciting because CRC will then become an even more significant partner than they have in the past for the 10 years of our existence in that we will be out at CRC Friday nights, all day Saturday and all day Sunday 
uh, doing community programming for Channel 17 as much as possible live in prime time over Channel 17. And uh, in exchange, we are providing equipment, um, again, through the purchase of our matching funds, that will so significantly upgrade the television production capability of the only real hands-on broadcast careers courses in the county uh, so significantly that one of the TV techs out there said, you know, we've been driving back and forth to Dixon and the analogy is this takes us to Mars. Uh, and so it's a great marriage again and, and we're excited about that opportunity. Uh, one thing that uh, we're looking for now since we've been able to expand our facility uh, to two studios for the first time in our history um, is an opportunity to work with nonprofit groups who perhaps in the past have not wanted to train their own crews, which is the philosophy of public access. Our goal is to provide a technical crew of paid staff, student interns on stipends, and so therefore nonprofit organizations can come to Kasumnas and do programs based on their content expertise rather than their ability to work the technology. So uh, please help us in identifying uh, themes of community interest and uh, nonprofits organizations that will help to actually supply the content for those programs on an ongoing <coughs> basis. Um, the um, programming committee is of Access Sacramento is uh, uh, investing a lot of time and energy. We've already met with the Nonprofit Resource Center and the Community Services Planning Council and we'll be meeting with many other nonprofits. But again, you folks work a lot. and. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. Say we had a regular 8 o'clock on Sunday night program about children's issues. Well, that might be hard for one organization to program, but there are many organizations in Sacramento that uh, deal with children's issues. So let's identify a, a host expert in this area and then each Sunday night bring in other groups and other organizations, make it as interesting as possible. And, uh, and really see that opportunity. And you can just think in terms of the different themes that you can create in the way of programming. Um, an update in terms of operations. Uh, with the uh, MOUs, with our partners in place, uh, we have new studio cameras, videotape recorders in the control room, studio site curtains, uh, which is a, an improvement on our playback capability as well uh, at the Coloma Center. And so that means our public access users are not being shortchanged in the slightest uh, with our growth to uh, CRC, and they're very happy. Uh, we did, unfortunately, have a break-in, first one in 10 years, on our mobile truck. And uh, two cameras were stolen, but thanks to the city police, they recovered one. Uh, it ended up being a, about approximate $25,000 uh, insurance payment that uh, we are uh, using to replace equipment and upgrade the truck. So it's actually working out okay, although for a couple of months there it hurt us in the way of doing truck programs. And new security measures are being implemented at the Coloma <coughs> Center to make sure that uh, to the best of our ability we prohibit that from happening again. Um, three state-of-the-art nonlinear Grass Valley Group computer editing systems were purchased as part of our partnership with CRC, one to remain at the Coloma Center, two to be granted to uh, CRC and in turn they're borrowing two, which uh, gives them four stations. These are state-of-the-art stations. Channel 3 bought the same equipment a year ago. I don't know the exact figures, but I know each station costs in excess of $50,000. Uh, but because of technology changes, because we were able to work with Grass Valley Group, we got each of these systems for $14,000. And I, I mention that because that's a significant contribution on the part of Grass Valley Group and a significant increase in the uh, technical capabilities for student training at CRC and our community producers as well on the weekends. On programming updates, we've completed the first of five Sacramento Youth Symphony concerts. During the summer, we did uh, City of Sac Sacramento Summer Youth Training Project. Five teenagers were trained how to do video and then turn, did a 30-minute video, wonderful job, on a senior health care and residence center here in town. Uh, we just completed a Sutter's Fort documentary with a state grant helping to pay for the cost. That has been running on our channel 
Sutter's Fort uses it to help solicit uh, private donations so that school children can participate in their uh, activities at, at the fort. And also the History Channel has now requested the documentary for national distribution. We've just finished up uh, two documentaries with the help of a sesquicentennial and regional foundation grant that in part cover the cost of documentary on the Sisters of Mercy. Um, this is the 150th anniversary of the hospital, but this documentary actually looks at the sisters themselves and how they came from Ireland to the United States and eventually up the river to Sacramento and uh, the history of that. And we're also looking at um, the local Chinese community and the importance of Chinese families, uh, the family associations, and um, uh, we should have that documentary completed within the next two weeks. I just left a luncheon with Coach John Bullock of Sac State. We're covering all five home games of the Sac State season this year. We just covered the Montana game, and we'll be covering the other four. Sac State's excited about this. Uh, we've explained to them that unless they help us find um, business underwriting to cover the production costs, uh, you know, the other sports, which we would love to do as well, uh, will need some help in terms of the personnel costs. Because what we're doing here, production of sports is what I would call in the industry as a grind. To go out and do a football game in inclement weather is hard work. It's hard to sustain a group of volunteers to do that. So what we're trying to do is actually pay folks combined with volunteers to make sure that each game is done and done well. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Are you looking for talent? <laughs> Are you volunteering? <laughs> you need you need play-by-play. -play, uh... Well, right now we we have play-by-play -play folks, but we're always interested in uh, working with folks. So I'd be uh, pleased to talk with you. Maybe a new career, Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were I, going. I can imagine a very interesting uh, a commentary team. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking at we're, if we can. We're going to try and say now they should have run off tackle on that play, and I was now they should have thrown the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a chance. Neither one of you. Know we are looking <laughs> forward to working with Sac State <laughs> throughout the left. year. Yeah starting with football, but other sports as well, and other cultural events. We've been welcomed on the campus before, but hopefully with a new energy uh, and a new long-term commitment. That's what we're really looking for. And once again, I'm going to come back to the folks at Sacramento Cable, because as we've uh, uh, put in an invitation before, in terms of identifying businesses working with their sales department, uh, the question is, are there programs on Access Sacramento that businesses would be interested in underwriting? And I think the Sac State sports schedule is just that kind of event. So we're going to be working to do that. And uh, the more the merrier. Uh, we will be doing radio of wrestling. So maybe, Roger, you can help us out wrestling. with that. Wrestling. Radio of wrestling. That's an exciting That's a long, concept. Long the, other, wrestling. <laughs> the other aspect, I think, which is really exciting about this is that we have uh, worked with SAC High Radio Frequency KXHV 89.7 and El Camino High KYDS 91.5 as, as we can over many years, but uh, working with the school districts and the working with the students and uh, trying to do that on a regular basis has been quite a challenge. What's interesting is this whole effort with Sac State evolved out of a newspaper article that said Sac State unfortunately didn't have any media this year in the year of moving to 1AA. And so Access Sacramento with the help of Sac High and El Camino High are doing the games live throughout Sacramento County, every home game. And uh, that's exciting because uh, as Coach Volick said, uh, we grow the best football players in the state, and yet they don't stay at home to play for us, so working with the high schools this way is exciting. In addition, I've included in your packets uh, a summary of the uh, Net at Two Rivers Media Lab uh, that Access Sacramento is uh, uh, organizing and hosting, uh, with the list of many organizations you see on the front of that sheet. We have been able to coordinate, it, it's actually a quite small space, uh, a little bit bigger than the desk here. <laughs> it's about, uh, oh, I'd say 10 by 15 feet. Uh, we were very compact over at our place. But with the city of Sacramento, they uh, offered us the space. 
And in that, we have three public computers that have full internet access. We offer free internet classes with the help of the federal grant money. Uh, and Saturdays now are booked through December and hundreds of folks coming in to learn computers and learn the internet. Um, and uh, in addition to that, we have a uh, special reception coming up, uh, working with city services in uh, Area 3. Uh, that's Area 3's night to host city services uh, uh, and invite uh, citizens in the area to come down and see what kind of uh, uh, opportunities the city offers. And uh, that will be part of the tour, especially targeted at neighborhood association leadership so that we can invite and empower them to use computers uh, for neighborhood association business and to better coordinate their activities. Um, at the last meeting that we had, there was a question in terms of are the grantees being efficient with the use of the money? And about the only real way that we can document um, efficiency, and we put a little graph together for your attention, is uh, a sense of the profile in terms of the programs that we facilitate. And you can see from year one, 1986, 10 years ago, when we had 88 programs, we opened in October of 86, up to uh, 1996, in which we had 4,074, and then conservatively, conservatively projecting out for the next few years of our uh, newly renewed grant, a continued increase, um, we could see there that there is a, there's just a constant rise in terms of the use of the facilities, the production of programs, the more programs there are, the more inclusion there is, and the more diversity you see in our channels. Uh, so we're quite proud of that track record. A specific example is also in your packet with the live wire show, which is on Wednesday nights from 6 to 6.30, and the range of guests that we've had on since June 5th. And they're quite impressive. Uh, in, 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 in who we've had on, and, and you can take a look through there yourself in terms of uh, uh, folks in the community that make a difference, and that's who we like to have. Uh, there was also a question in terms of uh, comparison one year to the next in terms of budget, so I presented to you, and this is actually fresh back from our auditor. Um, you're, you, you're having a look at them before I've even had an occasion to distribute to the board, but this is our audited financial statements for the past two fiscal years, and you can see that there is a year-by-year -year comparison. Uh, so you can see not what is projected in a budget, but actual dollars spent and how they were spent. And uh, if you as you have a chance to look at that, please, <coughs> as with anything I say here, please do feel to call. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and just in uh, conclusion, the success that we're having in terms of expanding the facility to Cosumnes River and therefore serving the South County more efficiently, mm -hmm. our friends in Galt and uh, Florin and Laguna and all the rest of the folks, um, uh, causes me to think in terms of another area of the county that's really underserved, and that is the East County and the Folsom area. And one of the things that I would like to propose, if this body is interested, is to explore the possibilities of what's going on in Folsom, uh, who might be some partners to uh, invite, to participate, and that hopefully in the next fiscal year see an expansion into the Folsom East County area, Fair Oaks and the other growing communities, uh, that also include a lot of high-tech industries that we might be able to get involved. I had a brief conversation with your executive director, Mr. Espasto, He's expressed an interest in terms of a live uh, cable out of the uh, Folsom City Council chambers, for example, the same with Galt, so that uh, there is live city council just as Sacramento currently enjoys. Uh, I was just told before the meeting by Wayne Val that a similar connection uh, that uh, has been discussed that is now being finalized in terms of improving uh, cable connection to CRC, so the live programming coming out of CRC uh, is going to be top notch. And uh, we'd like to see the same extended to Folsom, and uh, it's going to take a lot of cooperation. <laughs> so far, uh, Los Rios District has a campus in Folsom. Uh, so, uh, the uh, distance learning is a microwave feed from Cosumnes River College. Cosumnes River is excited about the possibility. Uh, so is that something of interest if, uh, if we were to come back in two or three months with a report in terms of uh, of uh, interest in exploring partners to serve East County areas. Mm -hmm. That's something of interest to this Well, point? I wouldn't speak for Mr. Cox, but I, I think uh, 
the first order would be to get some feedback from the city of Folsom pretty good event, huh? and then come back uh, come back to us with your findings great appreciate that and I know that's the area that you serve mr. Cox so hopefully if we can ask for your help in terms of court you have to help you sir excellent but just comment on that too I think when we talk about the East County I also think of Ranch Cordova and I'm just wondering if there's uh, any consideration uh, might be to as we are currently doing some wiring at Mather uh, mm -hmm. Air Force Base uh, um, and as we convert that as to whether or not we could have that capacity considered for as that facility grows out there I would think that that may tie in with some of the whether it's private business activities and or public agency activities and it there may be something if we're going to be looking along those lines that we look at at Mather as being uh, one of those opportunities in the East County uh, to have that uh, capacity available to Mr. Ventoli, let me add that to the list. I've had an ongoing discussion with SAC Cable, as, as Ron just mentioned, about uh, making for making live feedback possible from SMUD, RT, Folsom, Galt, and City Schools. And so we've been looking at the numbers and, and methods to do that under Metro 14. Let me add Nathan to the list and we'll spec it out. Thanks, Rick. And what we're looking for is an opportunity in addition to Metro 14 and government and SMUD and so forth related programming, an opportunity for the public to be involved. And we think we have a formula there uh, that includes education access and public access uh, out at CRC, shared use of a facility in those days and times when it's not being used for classes. If we could pursue that in the Folsom area, that might be a formula that might work. But I'd be happy to work with Rich and with Wayne and, and the Ed Consortium and Liz, uh, <coughs> Folsom City Council certainly, and I'll be sure and uh, uh, come back to you, but it sounds like there'll be a lot of folks uh, pursuing this uh, direction, so hopefully we can bring those folks online. If there are no further questions, that will conclude my report. Any questions or comments from Mr. Cooper? Thank you very much, Ron. Uh, Liz Rhodes. Good afternoon, I'm Liz Rhodes, the Executive Director of the Sacramento Educational Cable Consortium. Uh, we have a quick report to you today. We've missed seeing you for the last several months, so we thought we'd take maybe a little bit more than three minutes to um, re review a couple of things that we've been, been working on. Um, what we want to do is talk about a couple of our activities, and I have a, a short clip that I'd like to show you, and I have a special guest today um, for a very exciting project that's going to be key for us during the, the next year. First of all, I would like you to take a, a quick look at the packet of information we have for you. I give you warning though, don't read this one late at night, it will keep you awake because it is exciting. <laughs> Sorry, <Ron. laughs> um, most, of the, most of the things that I would yeah. talk to you about, rather than just, just, just take a look, they're, they're in here and I would like to use our, our time on, on something else. Um, but our, our resource guides, our annual plan, everything is in this entire packet, it's our yearly packet to you. Um, this being the beginning of the school year and one of our, our key um, activities on our channel are our live classes. We have more than 50 credit courses available this year and in, in your package you'll find the, the fall courses on this right one color sheet. Um, we have more than 50, 50 courses, credit courses on cable which constitutes more than 135 hours of live instruction every week. What is really exciting to us about that was exemplified over this past week and we had a, a booth at the uh, Sacramento Reeves and we had a number of adults and uh, high school students that came up and talked to us about, about the program and became very enthusiastic, very excited about that. A lot of, not, several of our teachers were here at the public hearing to speak to you and unfortunately we ran out of time and we didn't have a chance to, to speak with them. Um, so I thought what we would do today is give you a, a, a sense and not having you watch 135 hours of programming, but maybe taking a minute and a half and just meet via video these local teachers from our universities, our community colleges, and our high schools who are providing this instructional material to our community. So if we could roll that tape, it's just 135 hours narrowed down to a minute and a half. <laughs> Thank you. 
do it that way. That's a nice, nice, nice reception. They were very friendly. They were. Lots of music, no, uh, no picture. <laughs> no picture, just the no music? No picture. Strong on the audio. Well? It's nice music. Maybe, you like the music? <laughs> <laughs> well, rather than uh, sitting here, that maybe um, that could be rewound for those magic people in the back who, who do this so we could see some video, if that's possible. Because I really would like you to see that, if, if we can rewind it and give it a shot at the end of this report. Maybe we'll try that, because I'd really like you to see those people. Otherwise, let me move on. And that doesn't count as part of the minute and 30 seconds. I was just debating that in my mind. Oh, please, so. no. no, no. <laughs> the clock's not running, Liz. I think it's because it's been holding at three there for a while. So. <laughs> um, also in your packet, then, is an invitation to our annual Cable in the Classroom Media Fest, which is next Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Special thank you to KVIE and to Sacramento Cable, who are our co-sponsors in this event. We're taking a little bit different approach to it this year and that for the first time teachers get credit, uh, continuing education unit, for, for attending the event. Um, we have quite a few teachers who are going to be coming uh, this year from the, uh, the programmers because our big thrust this year is tie really tying the Cable in the Classroom program into the curriculum. You know, what a challenge, huh? It really is. Technology run amok. Take <laughs> Rich's It only happens at we'll the Cable Commission meeting, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> advanced technological skills. All the new fully equipment. Evident. That's what's going on. And it, this always happens to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been my week. Um, anyway, we had sent all of you copies, and we hope that um, if you're available, at least drop by and especially meet some of the programmers. And what's exciting to us about the programmers this year is that they're sending teachers, and we're looking specifically at the curriculum and at lesson plans, so that the teachers who come to the event, our local teachers, will be able to go right back into their classrooms and be able to use that material more effectively. And as I said, Sacramento Cable has just been wonderful in terms of helping us out in uh, pulling this together as well as KVIE. And KVIE has some very exciting things they're going to be sharing with us at that time. In the nature of looking at uh, the curriculum and how all of this ties together, I'd like to introduce to you a person who has been a big supporter and pioneer in Sacramento in terms of cable in the classroom and really motivating teachers to get out there and to use this wonderful resource that we call cable. Uh, Barbara Ross is the Coordinator of Information and Technology for the Sacramento County Office of Education and is also a national figure as a CNN educator and also works very actively with the National Cable in the Classroom group and has traveled throughout the United States and California promoting cable in the classroom. And she's here today to talk to you about some of the projects that she's involved with with SECC and the Sacramento County Office of Education. And then maybe we can see the, the tape. Okay. Barbara? <laughs> I appreciate the honor of addressing this group. I have worked with Cable in the Classroom and SECC for quite a number of years and I'm excited about the change in the media fest. Liz alludes to the shift. It's a considerable shift. Moving now away from awareness sessions into implementation sessions. Classroom teachers are frequently working without an information specialist at their side. They're needing some way to take information back and use it effectively not relying on a media specialist to prepare it, package it, and present it to them. My piece at the Media Fest will be for um, an, an additional session with cable programmers presenting their lessons. I'll be doing a piece, an organizational piece, for those classroom teachers who are buried under tape. You know you have VCR tapes with no labels. <laughs> You know you can't find them. <laughs> that piece of programming you'd like to rewatch from th three weeks ago that you videotaped. Well, classroom teachers are swamped with 30-minute programming. They are swamped with 15-minute bits that are perfect openers for their physics class, but they can't find it on their two-hour tape. My piece will help them to do some kind of organization so that they can find the correct piece for their classroom. Um, in addition, in the packet that Liz has provided for you, you'll find a light green 
um, flyer that announces an exciting partnership between FECC and the County Office of Education. Um, cooperation that between the two organizations has presented us with an opportunity to extend the Media Fest beyond the programmer um, style awareness sessions to a curriculum based session. You'll see that we're providing five continued um, programs so that teachers within a curriculum field, social studies, would attend a meeting at the County Office of Education and I, with Jean Wilcox from SECC, will present lessons K-12 that they can take back into their classroom and use effectively. Again, the excitement is moving beyond awareness into the implementation. It'll increase utilization and I'm quite sure promote um, future cable users. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you very much. Are we ready to roll tape now? Okay, our uh, cable educators, our local teachers, for your minute and a half enjoyment and viewing here, you want to roll tape now, please? <laughs> <laughs> this is the last try. After that, we'll send you a tape, okay? But that'll be 135 <laughs> hours worth. <laughs> Going there, they haven't turned our There. Yeah. On the monitors, it was fine. Oh, subject, good. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Just give me a nice production. We have, um, by the end of yeah. the year, we'll have over 65 teachers, okay. you know, when you put the okay. second semester class. That, that correlates to this year, we're anticipating more than 5,000 students <laughs> enrolled via cable. And that's not to mention the people who just watch those classes for They're enjoyment. So um, it's a considerable number. Sacramento is leading the state in terms of the number of students in, enrolled in distance learning, and it's because of the educational channels that are available. And we're quickly moving into an era where we will be able to of actually course. offer complete degree course. programs, and that, that is one of our, our goals. We've got a few hurdles to get over to get to, but it is very exciting, and the fact that these are all our local teachers. So that wraps up my report. Unless Mr. Pinnell has a question for you. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I saw the uh, the uh, the video, and I am concerned. Being an educator myself, my concern is is that many times when we see things, and especially when children look at these videos, sometimes it is good to find qualified educators, but it's also to get some qualified educators that look like a lot of the people we serve. So I hope you're a little more sensitive to who we put on the screen in the future. Yeah, I will pass that on. It's a very, very I, I hope good that comment. is because yes. I watched it. I saw one African-American teacher that taught African-American history. We have very good teachers in this city and in this community, as well as Latinos, as well as Asians. 
and I would hope that they would be a part of that because that's the kind of stereotype our kids get that they never see anybody to teach them that look like them, especially if we're showing it on TV. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will definitely pass it on. The selection criteria I know is different, but it's something that I don't have a problem with selection. I just think that it just makes yeah. good sense. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm just saying that it just, I just want to sensitize you. Yes, sir. Okay. Liz, did you say that, that um, uh, fairly soon there will be full degree programs? That's the goal. Offered, offered but there are still some, some major obstacles to get around. One of those is being um, the mm -hmm. lab courses and that some of the um, faculty senate have difficulty in comprehending how would you actually create a lab scenario where you're not actually sitting in the classroom. And that's pretty much a, a nationwide concern. A lot of it is being addressed via the internet. We're just not quite there yet in Sacramento. Mr. Yee was wondering what it would take to qualify for your doctorate. We'll get back to you. Um, Mr. Yee, I'll have it back to you, Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> You have an honorary degree in poker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I will give you the name of people to address these questions to. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Thank you, sir. You got to learn the odds. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dickerson. <laughs> uh, Jan Tillman, KVIE. Correspondent. You have to have tests and names. Good afternoon. I'm Jan Tillman, Executive Director for Channel 6 and Channel 7 at KBIE. Uh, as you read in our Fiscal 97 uh, Cable 7 report, uh, the first part of this fiscal year is going to resemble what we've done in the past couple of years on Channel 7. Uh, our service will continue to emphasize uh, time-shifted, best-of programs from Channel 6. I hope you enjoyed the West, by the way. Uh, all of our locally produced programs air on Channel 7, and the unique service that we have in our breaks between programs on Channel 7, 24 hours a day, will continue. But we are currently in the process of doing an assessment of community needs and interests with an eye toward making some changes in the Channel 7 service. Uh, we are seriously considering a strand of programming that will include locally produced and acquired foreign language programming. Uh, we, are looking at, we are working with Sacramento Cable closely on this, particularly on the needs assessment issue, uh, what the, the Sacramento Cable subscribers are asking for, what they're interested in, how we may be able to fit a unique need that the Sacramento Cable system has with uh, access to some unique resources. Uh, we plan on bringing an update to you in the next several weeks on our progress. Today, however, I would like to take just a moment to introduce you to a brand new series that is going to launch this weekend. It addresses one of the largest and most essential resources in this state, agriculture. California Heartland is a highly produced, fast-paced weekly magazine series. It is shot entirely on location throughout the state of California. In a terrific and unique partnership uh, that we have formed with an organization called Ag in the Classroom, they will design a curriculum against each one of these half-hour programs, and they will make it available to their teacher ambassadors, 3,500 of them, um, every single week that will go directly into the classroom. Uh, teachers have the opportunity to record this program off air uh, from Channel 6 or Channel 7 or throughout the state on all of the California public television stations that will air it. Ag in the Classroom will also provide tapes to those teachers uh, if they miss recording the feed along with the curriculum. I have a very short tease of this and thanks to Liz, <laughs> I think this might work, uh, it's been tested. Um, this tease is designed to whet your appetite and capture your interest. Um, agriculture is not a subject that people immediately respond to. We think we found a way to make this interesting, informative, and entertaining. So take a look at this clip, please. Where does it come from? It's from the grocery store. That's why. Where do you go to, where do you get vegetables? I don't know the grocery store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Power plants. 
Same problem. There we go. We're getting it here. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. No. Got a lot of cows. A lot of cows. <laughs> cows? Cows. That, that was fast. Babe. That was fast. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> I. It's three minutes. Can we try it again? That was three minutes. <laughs> How fast they took Did you see Dan Gordon sleep. Sauter driving a tractor? I like that. <laughs> Not yet. No. We're going to try it. You didn't. You missed no, it. We need three minutes. We haven't seen no, it. No, we're going to see it. No, all we saw was some Holstein. <laughs> Those are Holsteins. I know the difference between a Jersey and a Holstein. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, not doing anything now. Where are they? Is that all that new equipment we bought? Lots of new equipment. We heard a rooster. There you go. Oops. Tracking. Try again, try again. <laughs> Just be patient, Jim. Oh, I am. <laughs> 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 it's oh, oh, oops, it's rolling. Really. Yeah, stuff gets fucked up. Yeah, it's we don't have any problem with the city, man. We got an old stuff. <laughs> We're going to get busy. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. Do you know how to fix it, Rich? Mr. Dickerson, why don't you guys get your stuff fixed over here? We don't have that problem with the city. We don't have that problem with the city? You guys don't have vehicle over there, do you? We got a video that works first. Yeah, we got a video we ain't got to do like this. Not be a problem on this. There may be an opening for a video technician. We have another yeah. thing. <laughs> if I wanted to go over and take a roller coaster ride, I would have went out and paid for it. <laughs> the other thing that happens over here. Stuff fixed. He got a big budget over here. Well, well, you got a three people staying at Sunday <laughs> calling you at 10 30 on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you guys have. <laughs> There's shills at one of the members. <laughs> yeah. Someone's jealous. Oh, yeah. Real jealous. Real jealous. Supervisor's jealous. Yeah, we just don't have those. Phones. No, but that's what happens. Every time we place old equipment, new equipment's like a star. It don't run right the way it was. The old stuff is compensated. Oh, they're almost yeah, getting it to work. It settle down. They got some metal calls, so they just sink probably on the tape. Well, Jim, what to, what speed did you guys film this at? <laughs> Warp speed. Warp let me speed. Tell you. <laughs> and we can't get our uh, our projector to run it. Yeah, we may have to call this one to say beam me up, <laughs> beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Please stand by. We're having technical difficulties beyond our control. I should take this opportunity to tell you about our funders. Um, the funders for California Heartland are the California Farm Bureau, right. Cal Farm mm. Insurance, PG&E, and the Agricultural Network. And they have funded a full year of programming, 52 weeks. See, I think that's wow. great. It's a long overdue series. It's it a really, tremendous it is. idea. Yeah. Um, I, I should tell you that when uh, Van Gordon Sauter started uh, with KBIE, came on board and said, our priorities are to do locally relevant community programming. And we said, yeah, that's terrific. And a farm show. And we said, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and over the past year, as we've worked on developing this, we have been educated and in fact it's an absolutely fascinating um, industry the most diverse in the world um, California feeds the nation and the world yeah, Excuse me, with, with our apologies we'll make copies of the tape and distribute to you it's fine in the back it isn't projecting correctly here but they see it without any roll back there so Metro will make copies and have it distributed to you with our apologies. actually if I can persuade all of you to tune in on Sunday night channel 6 we won't have it. to do that yeah uh, immediately following the uh, presidential debate from 6 to 8 p.m., um, we will premiere California Heartland on Channel 6, and then it will air on uh, Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. on Channel 7. So I ho do hope you tune in. I have a That's question great. for Dan. Yeah. 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 Will, will you be, as part of this, be featuring uh, local growers and producers? Uh, oh, absolutely. So you'll be doing, I mean, just we just got a little taste of it here with this clip, but so you will be doing 
Not only Sacramento County, but Central Valley and throughout California. We are, in fact, shooting throughout the state. It is a, uh, produced completely on location. Uh, we do have an objective of trying to represent the whole state, all of the commodities. But as I'm sure you're aware, the Central Valley is a primary producer for agriculture. In the, in the Delta, in particular, has some crops grown there that are, you know, number one, number two in That's world right. production. So, and the UC Davis School of Agriculture uh, is a very important resource for us. Okay. Okay. Jan, I, I will share with you when when my husband was first out of uh, law school, and uh, one of the uh, the jobs that uh, that he had was working for the California Farm Bureau, and he was their lobbyist here in Sacramento. But as part of that job, uh, we got to travel all over the state of California and have an opportunity to see farms all up and down and, and ranches up and down the state. And it was a, a, a tremendous opportunity to, to see the diversity and the richness of this state and what it contributes to the world market is, uh, is Absolutely. just incredible. Absolutely. And it, quite sincerely, we have learned that too. And this really is a series about the people of agriculture and the places and the innovations and the kind of business that it represents. It's an economic powerhouse in this state. So we're actually quite thrilled to be doing it. So we're on a fast track to get there. I do have, this is a, a media kit, and um, I will pass that out for you. It's got our broadcast schedule in it, so I'm hoping that you'll tune in. Okay, great. Thank Any you. Any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, actually, while Jan's there, and Liz, and Ron, uh -huh. uh, and, and think about Metro Cable 14, something Ron said um, made me think of this, and actually Jan made a comment that um, reinforced it. But one thing that, that um, I don't know if it's been explored or what the costs uh, associated with it are, maybe those make it, maybe it's cost per <laughs> But one of the, uh, I, I think one of the uh, uh, aspects of C-SPAN, which is most interesting, is the conferences and meetings that, that yeah. they cover. Mm -hmm. And we don't do any of that, to my knowledge, mm -hmm. here. And Sacramento is the host, both okay. locally and on a statewide, even national, from time to time basis of, of meetings which, and conferences which are educational and uh, cry out for, for uh, being televised. Um, we have a children's summit coming up next week in Sacramento for mm -hmm. three days, as an example, at the convention That's center. True which, uh, you know, it's something, frankly, I think is probably going to be a lot more interesting than watching the Board of Supervisors meetings, as fascinating, very true. as fascinating <laughs> as that is. Uh, I, I know, <laughs> I know that, that, that there obviously is cost in, in, uh, in any remote uh, origination of programming, but maybe there's, maybe there's an opportunity here to expand uh, if, if resources are pooled or in some if fashion I, to, to address this, uh, yeah. some I of those, it would be great. Some of those resources exist within Metro 14, and when you have requested a call to our attention a specific event, we'll look at it and see what we can do. Uh, there was the, uh, the, the planning conference about two years ago, the aging conference last year, where maybe our resources don't allow us to do the whole thing. Uh, it's like doing a football game, like Ron described. They, that, to do that is a big, but a big production. But we may go in and capture tape. We've done this on several occasions, and and linked up with the key speaker or presenter, and try to, to have taken the all-day conference down to a half-hour, 40-minute presentation, uh, a snapshot. Mm -hmm. And we've done that on several occasions within Metro 14, uh, generally in response to a request from from you. So well, maybe those, maybe we should look at a way of doing of budgeting for that kind of activity specifically and uh, doing it more systematically rather than just depending on, on ad hoc requests. Yeah. If you look at our budget, we do have a, a statement in there that we, we try and do one special project like that outside the normal meetings per, per quarter. And as they come through, we look through and see which, which ones we can fit in. It's pretty obvious or pretty clear to us that if, if the event's on a Tuesday, we have a real serious problem. Um, at other times, it's it's. Uh, it just occurs to me because I know that's coming up, and that, that I think it's going to be very significant. There are going to be people in the field who are who are nationally known. Marion Wright Edelman will be here to speak as an example. Um, but it's just illustrative of what what's going on all the time. That's uh, very in true. Sacramento. There is an opportunity that exists with KVIE, as, as I I know that many of you are aware, um, with the local programming that we are doing at the station. 
um, that's a resource where we can bring people in and we also can distribute that program programming beyond Channel 6 and Channel 7. Our capital report program that we're doing each week now is uh, now going out on the California channel on the cable network. Um, so there are opportunities, I think, with pooling some resources and <coughs> distribution. Maybe I can just uh, put uh, a bookmark here for the next budget year to look at in, and in concert with the grantees think about what, what if any role they, they might play. You know, I mean, I, just uh, thinking about it, a few weeks ago we had a, a mock flood emergency to, to test uh, our, our response uh, from the city and, and the county. Um, that was the first time we had tested out the emergency operations center that we would jointly use now for the city and county of the convention center. I, I, I think there were people out there who would be very interested to see. Uh, they, may, they might not want to sit there and watch everything that's going on, but they might like to see for a while how the city and county, for example, would respond in, in an emergency uh, and, and some coverage of what was done right and what was done wrong. Um, you know, those, those kinds of opportunities are out there and they, and they are very educational um, in a broad sense in, in character and I, and I think uh, might be, they would have an audience, I, I think, to, to, you know, um, to some extent. I mean, uh, maybe it's not Murphy Brown, but. I'm happy to bring that, bring that back to you. It's, it's probably appropriate to, to revisit that. Uh, we go back several years where we came to you and, and said, what are the priorities for Metro 14? And you said government meetings. It's time to relook at that and see that we may have some other things to put in the mix. Let's do that in the next budget cycle. Any other Thanks. questions Thanks. for me? No. Thank you, Jan. Uh, item two, franchisee slash licensee general status presentations. Uh, Wayne Vowell. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wayne Vowell, general manager of Sacramento Cable, and I have no audio visuals, and I'm going to get involved with this. <laughs> Uh, two items that I wanted to update everyone on, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, construction project that we started and a, a Comcast update. The construction pro project, uh, as you may recall, was about a $20 million project that was initiated in October of 95. It was predominantly a fiber upgrade. Uh, electronic upgrade, if you will, uh, carrying us from 450 to 550. Uh, we've added uh, probably an incremental 8 to 10 channels as a result of it. Uh, I'm happy to announce today that we have completed 92% uh, of the project. The remaining two project uh, areas are uh, the Elk Grove area, Hub 7 and Hub 8, and Galt are the last two. We uh, have every belief that we will have this project completed uh, ahead of schedule, at least a month ahead of schedule. Uh, and I might like, if you don't mind, a moment to, uh, there are a number of reasons that we're very proud of this project. One, it, it brings uh, uh, the channel offerings from our cable operation to the community of Sacramento, one of the best in the country in terms of numbers of channels. Uh, but two, it was the way the project was controlled and managed. And it was controlled, there have been over, since October of 95, uh, to at least today. There have been probably 230 some odd uh, uh, calls into the Cable Commission office, I believe, regarding uh, general issues, whether there are problems or whatnot. Only seven of those 200 plus calls have been construction problem related. Uh, now that's uh, a phenomenal issue. I mean, that's phenomenal. And it's it happened because of the insight of the Cable Commission and Rich's office and his staff and their input uh, working with us to find and develop a communication plans to the, commu the, 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 the consumers here. There are 430 some odd thousand homes that we have to deal with. Uh, and to have seven complaints is, in my opinion, uh, remarkable. And it happened because of the, the competent management at Sacramento Cable, Dave McVickers, uh, Carrie Hansen, that whole team <coughs> of men and women executed the project and it happened because Rich engaged himself. Uh, we invited him in, we uh, asked for his guidance, his thoughts, and uh, as I might share with you, some very insightful thoughts came out of the Cable Commission office. So uh, you should be very pleased with what they did to contribute to this, what I perceive to be a, a huge success. Uh, it was $20 million, in my opinion, that was well spent. We're on budget. 
we're on time, and we are delivering uh, some quality programming for the community and your constituency. So uh, thank you, Rich, for your guidance and your help. Uh, secondly, uh, the Wayne, uh, yeah. a question on that. Sure, right we're right in. Wayne, I just have to tell you that uh, seven is an outstanding number, but I think that uh, you're not giving us the whole story, and that's the fact that uh, the management has changed um, at Sacramento. Uh, I personally just got mine last week. I start out with a what looked like a registered letter, which was not, but it, it, it appeared yeah. important, so I opened it. <laughs> then there was a door hanger the next day I got home, and the third day I got home there was a uh, message on my answering machine that you were going to be working on my television in the next day or so. So I really think that, uh, you know, what, what we used to see a few years ago is no more with Sacramento Cable, and I just want to commend you for uh, letting us know ahead of time. And, of course, as a member of the commission, I knew it was coming, yeah. but didn't know what day, so... Well, I, I, I thank you, sir, for recognizing. One question. Is it my imagination, or is the, is the clarity supposed to be better? After well, it's that? supposed to be better. We still may be tweaking. I'm not no, sure. But I mean, it is better. Well, but it, I, it better be. Maybe it's my imagination. $20 million is <laughs> it's supposed to be. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's my imagination. And I said, well, he said they were going to do that <laughs> yeah, well, for us, or for us, whatever. Clearly, it, it's well, still not exactly right from certain areas, but it's not because no, it can't it, be. It's it seems just, clear. It, it, uh, I'm not sure. There are over 200,000. 200,000 passive and active pieces of gear that were tinkered with, 4,000 miles of plant. Uh, very, very delicate job here, but uh, the communication side of it was what we took great pride in. And uh, what you've just articulated, the number and the timing of each one of those communique is a result of Rich's input and somebody at our company executing it correctly and managing the people that execute it. So uh, everybody deserves a great pat on the back, and it's that sort of performance that gives us encouragement that the next project, because there will be another one, as you're well aware, with the Comcast upgrade, it's going to be far more intense. But I think we have the foundation and the process, the process, to execute something uh, of this magnitude as well as we did. So uh, I think it's great. Uh, the uh, second, wait, one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, did you give us an estimate of, of when you think the South County would be done? Well, I'm told, uh, I think we were scheduled to have it completed by the end of December. Dave told me this morning that we're probably going to have everything done by the end of November or the middle of December. So right, I'm you. trusting, sir, that that will be the time frames. Uh, but clearly, no later than the end of the year. Thank and you. there's a great array of new product, I might add. So we're anxious to provide it to the marketplace. Uh, Comcast. Um, I had hoped the last time we were here and uh, all the, the hard work that the uh, Cable Commission's office put into it, their legal uh, people, uh, the Comcast people, the Scripps Howard people, that we would have had this project or this merger over with and I would be standing before you as a Comcast employee on their payroll. I'm standing before you as a Scripps Howard guy on their payroll talking for Comcast. So. Uh, it's a, it's a stock value deal, and for the ones that are interested in the stock market, it's having a wonderful time, but the cable operators, for the most part, their values just seem to be very lethargic. Uh, Comcast uh, stock prices are below the collar of which the merger was acceptable. Uh, things are going to be worked out. I am being told Scripps is negotiating heavily with the Comcast people in the event that the prices don't get where they need to be within the time frames they were expected to be there. Uh, there is still very positive energy to complete this transaction. Uh, Comcast people are on the phone with us regularly. They are visiting next month. I mean, so we feel very positive it's going to happen. It's just a situation that is more timing than anything else. And uh, I do believe that we, uh, the date that I have been given to articulate to you is November 15th or between the 10th and the 15th. Uh, proxies have been sent to the stockholders for the Scripps Howard uh, uh, stockholders and they're having a board meeting on November 5th uh, and I would assume shortly thereafter uh, the merger will in fact be complete whether the values are where they need to be or not. But uh, uh, we're still very much looking forward to the Comcast uh, relationship and I have every reason to believe this community is going to prosper as a result of that relationship. So uh, I wish I could say it's done and they're here, but they're not. They're on their way. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you, Wayne. Uh, item three, a staff status report, uh, legislation and meeting schedule.
plus one or two other staff items, Mr. Chairman. Uh, legislation first. The governor signed SB 610. This was the late fee uh, bill. This is a bill that presumably or presumptively establishes $4.75 as the agreed upon or as the, as the late fee amount at 37 days. It, it slightly changes the practices in California. This is a bill that, that we opposed, CSAC opposed, the League of Cities opposed, the District Attorneys Association opposed, the Department of Consumer Affairs, the Governor's Office of Planning and Research, and the Governor's own lead unit all recommended a veto of this bill. Uh, most of, the, of those entities felt that, the, that to level the playing field, the cable industry should, should be treated like cellular, telephone, and other industry segments in telecommunications and have a late fee of 1.5% of the unpaid balance. Uh, the cable industry was successful in, in uh, its lobbying efforts, and that bill is now law. Interesting, it's Chapter 666. Uh, as, as we look forward to legislation next, for next year, I expect you will see uh, from the combined industry again, another right-of-way bill, one that will involve more appropriately, I think, your, your public works and planning departments than your cable commission. But uh, last year, I worked hard in that bill with the, with the league uh, and, and CSAC and staffing it and saw to it that uh, city and county planning entities were kept abreast of it. This year's bill was 1896. Uh, it was signed by the governor, but it was severely and effectively neutralized uh, to balance the industry and the local government perspective. I suspect you'll see another run of, at this type bill next year. This has to do with managing the right of way. Who can, who can dig when and under what rules? Further questions on legislation? That's where we stand. We're not anticipating anything at the federal level this year legislatively. Uh, secondly, uh, we have staffed and, and have, uh, have researched uh, where the Cable Commission would, uh, or how we would re respond depending on the election relative to Citrus Heights. If Citrus Heights does incorporate, we will, staff will initiate a letter uh, to that new entity explaining to them the options. One of the options would be, of course, to have them uh, join your JPA. If they were to do that, I would expect the staff would come back to you with some recommendations on how your representation might change. There are a couple of other alternatives that they would have as well. But we have look, looked at it and looked forward to that uh, possible outcome. Um, we want to comment on a couple things. One, Metro staff is geared up and has a, a very large schedule of, of uh, election forms coming up. So I call that to your attention. Uh, I'd also mention that if, uh, uh, Mr. Waters, if you notice some better improved clarity of Metro Cable 14, uh, it's because with uh, the Sacramento Cable has replaced the line that goes from here in City Hall back to their head end. So the, the nine, ten-year-old cable had deteriorated uh, on their volition, no muss, no fuss. It's fixed and all taken care of. Some of the trench work in front of City Hall about three weeks ago uh, was the replacement of the Metro, the Metro 14 upstream feed. Um, I wanted to comment that the county executive invited me to the county department head's retreat a week before last. I'll say it was a very intensive and exhaustive experience for two and a half days. And I know that the Board of Supervisors will be seeing uh, the report out of that group uh, a week from Tuesday, as I recall. Um, you may notice a little input from the staff person into the priorities for Sacramento, or the recommended priorities for Sacramento County. Sacramento Cable noticed us this week that they intend to file a Form 1240. It's an FCC rate adjustment form. In late August, I sent you a, a memo. That was uh, one of the meetings that I gave you a memo in lieu of having uh, a meeting such as this, where I described the, um, the going forward rules for the FCC. And if the screen comes up, I'll walk you through these very quickly. Supervisor Dickinson may recall that, that we commented into the FCC process last year on, going, on the going forward rules. These were the rules that uh, set the, the, the way the rates would adjust in the future. And as you can see before you, hopefully, that, that the FCC provides that cable companies may adjust rules for retransmission fees, that is, uh, the fees related to taking somebody else's cable signal and using it here, copyright fees, that's fairly traditional, the increases in programming costs, some taxes if they're cable specific, we don't have those. Uh, franchise related costs, we don't, I don't rec recall that we have any of those either. Um, franchise fees, uh, FCC regulatory fees are now going to five cents. The point about these is these are all deemed external costs and automatically passed through to subscribers on a series of forms provided by the FCC. Um, 
See if I can get the next page of this. This is supposed to help me. We use this at, at your budget time and it worked great. No, it doesn't want to work. Here we go. Um, the other things that, that the SEC allows to be passed forward are added capacity. Uh, Wayne just mentioned that Sacramento Cable has added new channels. Some of the costs associated with adding those new channels are allowed to be passed through directly to subscribers. There is a, a true up calculation where historic inflation levels, what was projected for historic inflation is compared to the actual and those costs adjusted through. Uh, there are provisions now in the latest FCC structure where the future aspects of inflation are adjusted in, as well as the uh, equipment costs, the cost for equipment used by subscribers. Generally, the FCC says you take the actual cost of the converter box on top of your set, divide it by 60 months, and that passes through with some other factors for, de for depreciation and inflation and use of, use of funds. The point to all this is that um, Sacramento Cable has noticed us this week of their intent to file uh, within the going forward rules on November 1st. We have 90 days to review that. Uh, I can tell you or I can believe that based on other processes such as these that I've seen with other cable companies, the rate increases will, will not be, uh, may be sizable. <laughs> um, there, there, there may be some rate increases that will uh, get your attention, uh, so we will work through those. Uh, Process-wise, we will use the same consultant that worked with staff before that helped us analyze the transfer. That's Jay, Jay Smith. I'll tell you that we're very comfortable with him, and we would bring that back to you at the next meeting. Um, if, in fact, and the practice has been that we go through the numbers in quite a level of detail with Sacramento Cable, and we reach the point where we agree that the numbers are accurate and, and uh, reflect what the regulations provide, uh, there actually is no formal action on your part uh, if we find that there are concerns or a, or a reason to uh, deny the request or file a complaint with the FCC for the segment of the rigs of the rates that they control, uh, that would become action recommended for you. Um, the last uh, subject matter is relative to your agenda and, and your meeting schedule going forward. As you're aware, we, we staff in consultation with the chair recognize that we didn't have uh, substance enough for an agenda for the last couple of months. Looking forward, it's staff's recommendation that you formally approve a meeting schedule for December 5th, March 6th, 97, and June 5th, 97. In December, I would see the agenda looking at uh, the status of the Sacramento cable uh, rate increase. Maybe at that time it would be a Comcast rate increase. And then the status of the transfer between Scripps and Comcast. In March, uh, the agenda would include election of the chair, discussion of the grantee allocation estimates, where we are with legislation, and uh, as you recall, every March or April, I, I try and get you an exec session and review the status of your pending litigation. And then in June, of course, that's, that's, bu that's the budget session. I would ask that um, you approve a resolution st stating these dates with the authority that the chair could call additional meetings if necessary. On, um, any questions? Uh, this gets us from now until the end of the fiscal year, a schedule of December, March, and June, rather than having a meeting schedule every month and then having to cancel it if it looks like we don't have substance enough. Mm -hmm. December, March, and June, and in it, um, what would be the dates? Uh, December, these would all be the first Thursday, be your, your standard meetings. So this would be December 5th, March 6th, and June 5th. I comment that one of the reasons we're skipping November is that we probably have difficulty getting a quorum because the city council <laughs> has changed its November meeting to the first Thursday because of the election day. No. So November so right off the bat was difficult. No, I just wanted to make sure they were on our regular meeting days. These are our regular yeah. meeting days at first so Thursday. So they'd be the early part of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. These are our regular first 30 meeting days. Essentially what we're saying is we're freeing the month not so stated, February, November, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Chairman, I request a motion to establish these as our next meeting date. So moved. Second. I have a motion that's been seconded. Any comments? Call for the vote. Cox. Aye. Colin. Yes. Natoli. Aye. Dickinson. Aye. Ye. Aye. Waters. Yes. Pinnell. I'm confused, but yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm yes. Yeah.
Pratt. We're skipping the yes. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, mm. Item four, Mr. I, yeah. Mr. Chairman, members, in August of 1994, we filed a rate complaint. Uh, you filed a rate complaint as an entity with the FCC uh, regarding the manner in which Sacramento Cable Television set its cable programming services tier rates. These are the rates for the higher level of cable programming services, which the FCC regulates. As you recall, only uh, your commission is only empowered to regulate the basic service tier, or sometimes called economy basic, the $10 or $11 service. Last Friday, the FCC posted to the Internet a denial of our rate complaint. Uh, I shared that with you and adjusted the agenda for today's meeting ac accordingly on, on Monday. It's staff's recommendation not having seen the complete FCC analysis, although we have tried to both email and call the FCC, um, that, that we, in lieu of having another meeting, that you you authorize staff to file for a review or reconsideration pending seeing what the FCC has to say. Here's the reason. The summary before you describes uh, reports to us that the FCC made its determination on, the, on, on this rate complaint having to do with the channel count. It concerns me because that was not the issue that we filed. We filed, as you recall, having to do with the, with the way in which cable operators and the FCC determined that remote controls would be counted in the rate setting procedure. The FCC uses an econometric model where they've done this extensive regression analysis and looked for key indicators that then help generate the rates. This rather large formula is very sensitive to remote controls. We asked the FCC for an interpretation of that. What we got back in this summary was a discussion of channel count. So we have some concern that there may have been an error. Uh, I don't. If that's the case, the, the cost and the process to file the appeal is fairly simple. I, you know, it's, it's your choice. I recommend that you delegate that decision to staff in lieu of having to call a meeting to do this. The key point is that, that the, the release date was Friday the 26th. We have 30 days to seek review or reconsideration. I hope I've described that well. You're doing great. I'm, okay. <laughs> I was going to say I get through the whole meeting without saying <laughs> So the, the recommendation is that you delegate to staff and council authority to file for review or reconsideration should the facts and, and or factors in the FCC analysis of their denial uh, support that. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, call the vote, please. Cox. Sorry. Um, Collins. Yes. Natoli. Aye. Dickinson. Aye. Yee. Aye. Waters? Aye. Pinnell? Aye. Pratt? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. That concludes uh, staff's okay. items. Before we get to uh, public comments, I have, a, I have a couple items I would like to discuss. First is uh, a, a very, very special thanks to Randy Wynn and Bill Piper, crew here. Uh, they came to Galt, who's remodeling their council chambers, and this provided all kinds of expertise to us. and and literally kept us from making several mistakes with our new uh, uh, electronic system that we're going to have. We're going to give you this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This is an old system. Uh, uh, and even, even in fact, a way to stage it so we don't have to spend all of our money at once. But anyway, a, a great thanks to Randy and Bill. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The other thing is I've had a couple of discussions with our executive director about uh, kind of where do we go from here type of discussion. And I mentioned to him today that maybe we should have some kind of a, uh, a workshop or something like that with input from all of us and kind of decide a, a meeting schedule, if, we, if that's important to us. We have the executive director's evaluation to do. And uh, with this spreading out of the meetings like we are, I just thought maybe with your concurrence it would be a good idea to throw an agenda together. And if we get your approval, then go ahead and schedule the meeting. and this kind of, like I say, where do we go from here kind of meeting. I think we are at a, at a stage now where things are changing again dr pretty dramatically. So if I, if I, if I ask the current, we'll go ahead, we'll, Rich and I'll go ahead and work on it then. And in that regard, would it be a special meeting or be a part of one of the other meetings? Uh, I, I think it's something we could schedule into one of the meetings we've just right. approved. That was, okay, that was the idea. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Uh, I, in talking with the, with the chair, um, and as I sometimes do, back off and look at the big picture, cable television is becoming a, a smaller and smaller piece of this telecommunications revolution. There are many things going on. Uh, and the issues of, of right-of-way management, 
compensation for use of the right of way include involve cable, but also involve many other issues and aspects. And, and there are opportunities you may or may not wish to consider uh, as a joint powers, and I think it's appropriate to start looking at those. Uh, other jurisdictions, the number one issue when I, when I uh, mentioned I've been invited to speak to, Le to the League of Cities annual conference, the, the number one issue facing communities in the telecommunications side right now is cellular towers and PCS and other wireless towers and, and your staffs are being hit with that. Um, some communities, some jurisdictions have looked at that on a regional basis and gone out to bid. I can also say that there is some, some staff expertise on that issue and some other issues that if nothing else we can help inform you or educate you. So I, we welcome the opportunity to maybe look at the big picture. Thank you. Uh, there are no speaker sheets There's on the public item. Does the, the commission have any comments they wish to make? I have, I have one. Okay. It relates to, the, to what Rich was saying. If we do um, uh, plan that at a special meeting uh, where we do get into talking about some of the other things that are happening within the, the, the right-of-ways uh, right or the whole telecommunications industry, I would hope that we would be able to invite um, as at least to be here uh, not only public works but uh, also our uh, our planning directors because we are hit right and left as communities with the cellular tower issues um, as well yeah. as the whole right-of-way issues in your district I know Mr. he's my council member <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm well aware of the the operational things that the planning directors are doing that the retreat was very informative to learn about those but I'm in a position to see what's coming down the pipe next and and those are some of the things that we may be able to help with I mean we are looking at a rebuild by Sacramento Cable we're probably looking at a rebuild by Pacific Bell Brooks Fiber has announced some ad additional activities in Sacramento and I noticed they just paid <coughs> the city just paid L Street I just overlaid L Street what a weekend before last I'll give it three weeks before somebody digs it up. Uh, you know, we'll see. There's nothing that makes a residential area matter than to have those new streets torn up. So I think it is an important issue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. With that, Thank we're, you all. we're adjourned. All right. Thank you.